intimate conversations with wedding professionals as they share their stories, insights, and tips from inside the wedding industry. We'll chat about how to be authentic and that it's okay not to be perfect or run your business like someone else's Instagram. Let's dive into the privilege it is to serve our clients and discover the talented creatives that make up our community. When we share what we know and who we are, we better serve our couples as a wedding day team, as well as each other. Simply put, be Fabo. Now here's your host, Bobby Brinkman. Hey podcast listeners, welcome to fall wedding season. Everybody's still with us, hands in the air, how you looking, everybody's busy. You might have noticed that we did not go live with an episode last Wednesday, um, and that is simply because it is fall wedding season, and a couple of our interview guests had to uh, change the time for their interview due to logistics and some weather, and by all means, I want everybody to always keep your clients and your weddings a priority, so rescheduling was easy. It just made it not available for a podcast to go live, and I decided to give everybody some grace and some breathing room, myself included. But everything is wonderful here in the world of photography and vibrant photography, as well as Beef Apple Podcast. So thanks for reaching out just to make sure. But today I'm bringing you episode 35. Episode 35 is a little bit about education. Um, we're going to talk about a workshop coming up. But I wanted to make it available today on Friday so you guys that are heading out to Wedding MBA will have a little bit of information about the uh, interview guests that we're talking with today. Um, for those of you heading out to Wedding MBA, um, good luck. It's chock full of wonderful things. I know it's going to be a fabo event. I sadly am not available. Moving it to October made it really hard for a lot of photographer friends. And uh, I'm double wedding this weekend, so there's no way I could uh, catch a flight as much as I would love to be super travel woman. That was just not in the cards on this trip. But episode 35 today, I'm bringing you Shamira Preston. She is a Houston planner and floral designer. Uh, her company is Magnolia Rose. Um, and like I said, she's a planner and a floral designer. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about that in the interview today, but we're really going to concentrate on the education side of what this woman is bringing to the industry and how she's bringing a new, uh, a new educational industry. And that is her Elevate Design Workshop. Um, she is a Southern organizer um, from the, with a big heart from the woodlands, um, she was raised in the suburbs, and uh, she loves, but she swoons for the country in a good trail ride. Um, she has a bachelor's degree from Norfolk State University in interdisciplinary studies, where she concentrated on business and graphic design. She knew that she wanted to own her own business and could not wait to get started. And uh, when she completed her time with the Navy, so thank you for your service, uh, and you'll hear a little bit about the logistics stuff that she did in the Navy, which makes perfect sense that she would end up as a wedding planner in a very complicated, logistic-driven industry such as weddings so she could not wait to open her own planning firm so in 2014 she did that with the magnolia rose company and now eight years in the industry she has learned a few things and some things that she would like to change and one of those is how we go about education so she has created elevate design workshops which will be taking place in houston november 3rd to the 6th and it is for creatives it is for florals floral direct de decor people it is for wedding planners, and it is for photographers. And it's an intensive, small boutique gathering. Uh, Magnolia Rose is also a small boutique company, so she specializes in smaller, extravagant weddings, so she does less weddings with more of an impact. So it uh, makes sense that she would have a workshop following those same terms. So I am very honored to be speaking and be part of this uh, workshop in Houston coming up in November. Um, I'm giving a couple different talks, uh, um, presentations, but the main thing is, is you're going to get to sit and mingle and hobnob with all of us speakers. So in the show notes, Tina's going to put direct links back to the Elevate Work Design Workshop um, Instagram and the Facebook page and the website so you can sign up. And if you listen real close to the podcast and her interview at the end, you're going to get a special to uh, jump on. And again, if you're heading out to Wendy NBA, Shamira is going to have a booth set up. So make sure you find her booth elevated design workshop so you can uh, sign up and be part of this amazing um, event workshop that's happening in Houston. It's education with a twist. Um, and everybody, let me tell you, it ends with a big style photo shoot that is uh, not to be missed. Uh, we're coming into booking season, so you're going to get a lot of content. And, uh, you know, I definitely would love to see and chat and meet some new people out of Houston. So again, without further ado, I would love, love, love to introduce you to Shamira 
Preston, a self-proclaimed lover of all things blush. So everybody, please welcome her. And again, go see her at Wedding NBA. And I cannot wait to meet and see all of you coming up in Houston here um, next month, the 3rd through the 6th. So thanks, everybody. Go forward with a wonderful wedding season. Let's hear what Shamira has to say about being busy, about being blessed, and the service we can be to others. So thanks for joining us, Shamira. Here we go. Hey, I do want to remind everybody, um, you're going to see that we had, a, or you're going to hear, actually not see, you're going to hear that we had a little bit of connectivity issues uh, during this podcast. But, you know, as always, we're nothing but authentic and we're nothing but honest. And by far, I am far from perfect. So uh, you'll hear a ding sometimes or a little uh, loud button noise. And uh, that is just when we lost connection with Shamira. Uh, and that big test is when that was going on. So um, bear with us. Um, we decided that it was just easier sometimes to edit a little closer. So you might hear a little bit of a pause or a break. And you might have to hear me repeat a question. But again, we're nothing but authentic here. Candid conversations, things happen. And hey, it's just like a wedding day. You know, you got to roll with the punches. Everything doesn't always go as planned. But you pick up your boots and you move on. So, you know, again, I apologize if uh, if it's a little bit of annoying as you're listening when you're driving or you're working. But uh, bear with us. It's got some good information in there. And again, hang on till the very end because she's got a special for you all to join us um, in Houston. And again, I look forward to seeing and meeting some new people. So just wanted to uh, remind you guys about that um, before the interview started. So again, everybody, please welcome Shamira to the episode 35. All right, podcast listeners, as I told you in the bio and in the introduction, I'm super, super excited to have with this day Shamira Preston. And she is such a a wonderful person that wants to help creative people expand and set set themselves up for success. And while we're going to talk a little bit about this creative workshop she has going on, I want to make sure you guys know a little bit about her from her own words and how she got to this point in the wedding industry, because that's what a lot of you guys ask me for. How are we getting to where we're getting in the wedding industry? What's been our purpose to get here? And I think we have a wonderful guest today that's going to be an insight on just what it's like to wear a lot of hats and want to keep improving the industry and uh, putting people before themselves in the business and uh, wanting to share education and, how, again, help everybody set up for success. So everybody, all listeners, please welcome Shamira Preston to the podcast. Welcome, Shamira. Hi. Thank you so much for having me, Bobby. I'm so excited to be here today to share with you all the amazing experience and then, you know, just a little bit about myself as well. Well, and that's what our podcast listeners are always interested in, what's new, what's happening in the industry. But really, I built this podcast to get the core of why are we doing what we're doing. So tell our listeners, you know, how you got into the wedding industry and, and why you love the wedding industry and, and just a little bit about everything that you do. Okay, so I absolutely love the wedding industry because I love love. Um, I guess you can say like I'm a hopeless romantic. I like all of the little small details of the wedding day. And then what really makes my heart warm is when a groom is like crying at the altar as the bride walks down. Like it all just makes me melt on wedding day. Like sometimes I'm a big mess just like the um, couple is because I'm crying because they're crying. I started in the wedding industry, um, through my church, actually, I was like the person that would help the senior coordinator coordinate everyone's weddings within the church. And um, that's really how I started. So it was very, very simple, nothing, you know, over the top, extravagant, you know, like today's wedding world. <laughs> and um, it was crazy. Like silk flowers were all the rave. Um, and baby's breath wasn't like a curse word. Um, so that's how I got started. I got and is, have started, you always like, been in the Houston area? Listeners, you know, right now we're talking to you like in Houston. Have you always been in that Houston or Texas area? Because I would think that church weddings there definitely are different than church weddings anywhere else. Um, for the most part, I have been in uh, the Houston area. I did uh, briefly go to Virginia. I stayed in Virginia for about seven years um, total after I got out of the military. So that was my market for a while. And it was a huge adjustment going from (laughs) the um, country scene to now being on the coast. And so everyone wanted beach weddings and things like that. Whereas Houston, we have to travel like an hour, two hours plus to get to pretty water. So um, it was definitely an adjustment in learning how to um, work within a venue and not within a church or an hotel. 
And so did you, do you think you're a military, what did you do in the military? And I would think that that would be the stringent timeline and everything that quote you see on TV about the military, maybe I should say, I would think <laughs> that parlays into you being a wedding planner, wedding educator, wedding creative. They have to kind of go hand in hand, don't they? They absolutely do go hand in hand. Um, so I worked in two sections of the military. Um, in the Navy, I was something called a boatswain's mate. Um, so we did a lot of building, a lot of repair work, things of that nature. Um, and then I switched over to logistics. And so it was all about stringent timelines, making sure you're in the right place at the right time, coordinating um, boats together to make sure everyone gets fed. Um, from one ship, you know, it was just, it was, it was a lot. It, it was still, a wedding on a boat. That's what it was. <laughs> Planning a wedding it, on a boat. And you still have yes. to deal with weather. You still have to deal with what's going to be in my way. So, I mean, seriously, doing exactly, exactly. what you described is exactly what we do on Saturday. So it makes sense. Yeah. Yes. I mean, so it, com it definitely prepared me for anything can happen. Um, the hurry up and wait. Yep. And structure, like structure beyond a reason. Like, so A, B, C, one, two, three. So um, that has definitely helped me um, through my journey um, in the wedding industry from being introduced in my teen years to now um, in my mid thirties. And so I don't, it's just, wow. Like, so, that, so you kind of knew, right. So that kind of led you into, of all the categories in the wedding world, obviously planning and creating was going to be the avenue to go, especially coming from the church background. So when you, when you left the church to start your own business, um, tell our listeners what the name of your company is. I know you got a couple of them, so shop them all out and tell us a little bit about each one of them. Yeah. So my planning firm is called Magnolia Rose. And um, we service couples for weddings, engagement season, and then we also do in-house floral um, design. And then our uh, workshop um, element of it is called Elevate, and that's all about elevating the wedding industry in you as a creative within your um, individual outlet, whether you are a planner, floral designer, a regular designer, or even a photography. Gotcha. Well, so when couples are coming into the Houston area, are you seeing destination weddings there in the Houston area that are calling for your services? Are you doing a lot of local weddings? What kind of is like, how are people finding you just on your creative wedding planning business? Um, I do a lot of marketing on Instagram. Um, that is mainly where I get my couples from. And um, my couples are typically people that live within the area, probably a hour or two. Sometimes I travel down to Austin or even over to San Antonio um, for weddings. So it can be within that, you know, two to three hour driving range, um, just wherever there is a pretty venue. A lot of people out here like the sleekness of a of a modern barn they want right. that barn-esque feel but then they want it to be modern so like clean white lines um chandeliers within the barn stuff like that so, so it only looks uh, like a barn on the outside nothing like a barn on the inside exactly exactly <laughs> so it's like i'm getting my country you know feel but let's be honest i love my bling so um mm -hmm. it's a it's a great mixture out here well, that, and, that, and so that leads you into about how many weddings are you doing a year? And is that one of the reasons, a two-part question, how many weddings do you think you're doing a year or you know you're doing a year? And is that one of the reasons why you really felt creating your own workshop was needed in the area and then just in the industry? Gotcha. So I am a um, boutique experience. I only take on 12 events a year. Perfect. Um, and so... I felt like the industry needed a chance to talk to each other. Um, that's why I created Elevate. Um, I found that over the years, you know, photographers would feel some type of way because a planner may have posted a picture but didn't have copyright um, permission or 
um, planners would want detailed shots, but the photographers were, you know, all about the couple because let's be honest, that's why we're there right. for the couple. But we wanted like some of our pictures to be like detailed. That way we can add it to our portfolio without couples um, being in the images. So I really wanted to open up that communication between us and get us talking and get us on like the same playing field. That way we can help each other um, and truly be a family on wedding day. Um, so that was the premise behind Elevate. And that, and that is a very, that is a wonderful fact because I can tell you as a wedding photographer, I'm very happy to share my images uh, and I do try to make sure that there are details for the creative people like you. You need to have the room shots that you created, your vision, and then I know the florist needs it. But then I also am responsible to make sure that the couple gets just as many photos of themselves. So it's a very fine line, just couple-wise, let alone then marketing-wise. So, you know, I'm all about the people. And I, right. and, and you'll actually hear me say this in one of my presentations. You know, I, my, my line is, if you pay for it, I'll photograph it. Um, you know, but, <laughs> but my core is the emotion because I believe that there has to be a human element to every photo, but the background and the things that you guys create are just as vital to somebody's story. And especially with you being a boutique business, I mean, do you get full reign when, when these couples are coming to you, Shamira, are they like, Hey, this is the building we want. Now you go out and get the entire team. You go out and come up with a design. Are you getting to be able to get all your creative juices filled when you take on your boutique couples? Yes, yes. And that's what I love because they are really just like, hey, I trust you. Well, you know, whoever you want us to use, whatever, you know. So, um, but with that, I still send them options like, okay, so this is your price point. These, you know, three people are really, really excellent. And either one of them that you pick, you'll be way oversatisfied with them. So I always give my couples um, options. What was the other part of your question? I'm sorry. Well, it, well, it, kind of, it kind of goes into, you know, I always talk about, I'm a big proponent of why a wedding planner and a wedding designer is vitally important. And I do think there are two different things. I think there's a planner that can plan for the day, do logistics, get everything done, be the leader of the team. Then I do believe there is a designer who is the person who has the vision and is bringing that vision to life. And often like you, they're the same person. So as the wedding day team leader, you know, it's, a, it's vitally important, the value that you bring to that. And so when you have these boutique couples and they trust you implicitly, do you still run into the budget and then you still run into the price? But the value that you guys can bring as wedding planners to the wedding day team is to keep all that in check with the couple and then along with the wedding pros. And so that's why I was curious if you are suggesting here's the wedding pros that fit the vision that you just gave. me. So basically I'll back all that up. So basically my question was the value that you guys bring as wedding planners on the day and as a designer, because I think that you're that one and the same person. So couples that come to you, are trusting your vision and what you're gonna do, but then they also entrust you with the budget. So are you finding that you have to curate the wedding with a nice budget in mind, but you know how to keep the couples on budget because it's important to stay on budget? And then do you get that fight about pricing and budget? Oftentimes I'm not really uh, met with the fight of it. If they tell me their budget, we kind of have that heart to heart talk right. right at the beginning. So if your if your envision like your vision doesn't meet your budget, I'm going to tell you that at our initial consultation. So for example, I had a couple that was like, I want royal wedding meets Met Gala, <laughs> but I only have a twenty thousand dollar budget, and my guest list is like two fifty. Yeah, and I'm like, well, to get royal wedding meets Met Gala, we need to do one of two things. We need to make your guest list very intimate, where it's only like twenty five, max fifty people, or we need to expand your budget. <laughs> um, you know, talk it over with all of your key players and let me know which one you're going to decide to do. You know, when we are faced with that, sometimes we have to change the vision a little bit. And, um, and then I find vendors that are going to fit in that price range. Um, as a planner and a designer, I kind of have like free reign of things. 
Um, whereas some planners are strictly planners and some designers are strictly designers. And those designers are focusing on the pretty and the um, floor plan and everything being cohesive that way. Whereas like people that are strictly planners are focusing on the logistics. So I often have to switch my hats and be like, okay, I really want to do this design, but logistically it's not making sense. So, hey, couple, let's do X, Y, and Z instead. And that's, that's the beauty. And that's what I was saying. To have, to have a team leader like that, that understands, hey, this design is really, really important, but it's still vitally important that we work as a team and get this couple married and on to the next step. And that is something yes. that is missing I think in the wedding industry. I mean, I think we have a lot of people now. I think, you know, we're not, we believe in candid conversations here on the podcast and my listeners appreciate that. But we have a lot of people that use that word now, design. You know, everybody's a wedding planner and everybody's a wedding photographer, but now it seems like everybody's a wedding planning designer. And, uh, and we know that that's always not the case. So I'm thrilled. And I think that uh, most creative uh, photographers will say, I'm thrilled to have somebody that can wear both those hats and know how to change those hats. At the end of the day, it is more than the couple even realized could happen. The wedding vendors are like, oh my gosh, talk about a flow of a day that was also beautiful. And then you do get to tip both those hats for being so successful. And I think that is one of the reasons why I admire the fact that you want to take your information and take your knowledge and share that into a template for a creative workshop. And right. when you have your workshop and you're doing it for creatives, maybe you can elaborate why it's so important that you felt it was just for creatives and maybe not for the blogger and we're not knocking anybody, but maybe not for the wedding dress designer, but that you really have this boutique workshop like you run your business. So maybe expand on why you felt it was important to have the creatives, the key role. Okay. So as we know, there are a ton of workshops in the industry that target multiple outlets at one time. And those workshops are all fine and dandy. But what I realized is when we're attending those workshops, we take our notebooks, we take tons of notes, and then we leave the workshop and we're all hype. And then that notebook then goes in our desk and collects dust. Exactly with Elevate, like, we don't have time for that. We, we are real life, you know, in, in working mode conversation, um, implementing these strategies, like, right on the spot. Um, that way, when you go home after the conference, it's not like, oh my gosh, I have to reread and, you know, all of these notes, and what did she say, and how do I do this no, we don't have time for that. It's getting it done right now there on the spot. Um, so that's what I really, really, really love about the workshop. And I picked these three specifically because we're the ones that work together the most often. And oftentimes on wedding days, you find one of us are having to wear multiple hats. Yep. For example, on wedding day, photographers if your couple hasn't hired a planner like you kind of get wrangled into that planning rope absolutely um, and so I want to through this workshop give the photographers the confidence to be like hey no I'm not your planner and here are some planners that I suggest reach out to them and you know for planners hey I'm not your designer like I have you logistically, but I really need help with the design aspect. Here are some key designers that I really love to work with. And so it's really getting us to um, niche down, not overextend ourselves and implement strategies into our business that are going to convert those followers that we have on Instagram and Facebook into the clients that are going to pay us what we deserve. Um, so that is Elevate, you know, and the bonus of Elevate definitely for photographers is on that, that last day um, of the workshop after the planners and the designers have made everything beautiful from florals and bouquets and stuff like that. 
we bring in our professional models, not, you know, hey, I need <laughs> couples to, I, I need a tr real life couple to um, come pose for this style shoot. We're not doing that. We're bringing in professionals so you can get those quality images of the designs that the uh, designers and the photographer, not the photographers, the planners have um, come up with. You get to add all of those beautiful designs to your portfolio, letting your couples know that you're able to shoot different perspectives. You're able to shoot in a room that may not have windows. So if you're all about, I'm a natural light photographer, um, it's really going to broaden your horizons because you're going to be put into instances where you're able to shoot that natural light photography. But once you move over into what would be the reception area that may not give you the opportunity to shoot that natural light, what do I do? So Sorry. these are the these are the times to work out all of those kinks and you can be like, you know what, I got this in the bag because I've been in these situations. And you also have a chance to talk to somebody because you're not rushed into getting the photo. I want to remind the listeners real quick that the Elevate um, Design Workshop will be held um, this November, the 3rd through the 6th, uh, in Houston, Texas. And uh, don't worry about uh, keeping all that right now, listeners. Um, Tina's going to put all that in the show notes so that we're going to always be able to click back and go. But I do want you to visit their website, follow that link, and it gives you the details. And while we're talking about the style shoots, I will say this. Um, listeners that follow us and, and fellow wedding pros know that I have a love-hate love -hate relationship uh, with style shoots. This style shoot is a little bit different, and I, and I want to expand because Shamir is being um, too kind with her creativity. She is going <laughs> to bring professional models in, people, not because she's not saying that we can't find couples and we can't do it. But you're on a short time. You're paying a nice rate to come. Let's have models that kind of know how to pose a little bit. We all know that on wedding day, we're, everybody's not a model. We know that our couples are not models and that they're nervous. By the time we get to a wedding day, we should have worked those kinks out. She is offering you the opportunity to come into a class, and I'm not talking 300 people here. I'm talking an intimate group of people that while you're at this room, after these wonderful designers that she has uh, arranged for us, you're going to be able to sit there and you might be able to sit next to a photographer. Heck, you're going to be able to sit next to me. Not that I'm a genius and I'm God forbid, not the best photographer in the world, but I might be able to tell you, Hey, I can help you a little bit with low light, or I can help you get where you just want room of just candles. So not only is it an opportunity to photograph on these style shoots listeners, you're going to be able to have those aha moments and take the time to talk and just kind of ask another photographer or another creative, well, why did you move that candle there? Or what did you think about this? So it's much more than walking away with just the photos. You're going to walk away with knowing that you, somebody taught you and you pick somebody's brain on how to take that photo just to the next step. And I don't care what market you're in. You go back to the market that you're from and you're going to be able to share what you've learned and gosh, come on, just challenge yourself. And I, I think that's what you're trying to do, Shamira, too, is you want people to come to this workshop, be open, but also be willing to challenge themselves a little bit and know that they're capable of doing exactly. it. So how did you go about when you decided that you were going to look for florals and designers? Um, did, did, you do, did you tell the speakers that are coming on um, and the people that are participating, did you kind of give them a vision for what you wanted to do so you change it up a little bit every year? Yes and no. That's how you answer so it. No, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I have a vision of what I would love to see Elevate do, but in that same token, my vision isn't another planner's vision or another designer's vision for themselves. And so while I am guiding the planners and designers up until the shoot um, with their design and things of that nature, I don't want to hinder um, their creativity. Perfect answer. Um, I love, I love Lizzo. And so the, the theme of this is like, be yourself. She is all about being yourself. And I want everyone that attends Elevate to be themselves and not try and fit into um, what they think people want. Right. Um, that but you're giving them the platform. And I, that's what I think is beautiful. You know, a lot of us have all these grand ideas. We just can't. A, we don't have the time. B, we never have the money. C, we don't have the time. And we just can't do it. So you're <laughs> right. offering, here you're offering, hey, I'm going to go out and find these places. 
I'm going to gather some people to come and teach. So come, bring your openness, bring yourself, bring your authenticity, and be proud of who you are at this moment and take this workshop. And we're all going to learn. We're all going to learn from each other. And the fact that you are still giving mm -hmm. a general idea, because I think you have to, otherwise it's, it goes off the chart. So you still have to share your vision, but then you're offering uh, the participants a chance to still be themselves. And, and it's, I think that is the greatest learning curve. It's we learn who we are as we learn who we are. And if we all know more about each right. other and everybody's stories, man, the better we can elevate everybody. And then mm -hmm. and just trying to set everybody up for success. So I think that is a, is a wonderful thing. Exactly. All right. So along the way, you have your businesses and you've been motivated to come out of the military. You've been motivated to start your business. So was there one instance aside, I know you talked earlier about where we needed a place to be able to communicate. Is there, what was the one thing that you said, you know what, I'm going to make a shift in my business that will help me bring this workshop. Was there one experience that just, you know, kicked you in the butt and said, man, I'm making the change. I'm going to elevate my own business. And I'm going to elevate this workshop. Most definitely. Um, two things um, in particular happened. One, when I entered back into the wedding industry after serving in the, the military, um, I noticed the shift of what people were looking for. And so when I reached out to Sage professionals, the ones that have been in the industry for, you know, a long time, it was hard to get information from them. Yep. Um, it was like, it was some like ancient secret where you had to climb, you know, the tallest peak in, to, in order to get the information. And so I, I reached a lot of roadblocks. And so I was like, well, I'll just do this. Um, you know, the saying, fake it till you make it. Right. Right. And that fake it till you make it can only take you so far. I was like, I'm not getting the couples that I want. I'm not attracting, you know, anything that I want. I'm not being who I am because I'm trying to uh, mimic something that, you know, someone else that I think is successful in the industry is doing. And so I would try and, you know, figure out what they're doing and copy it and then like, implement it into my business and then get upset because it wasn't working for me. I was like, well, they're charging, you know, $5 signs for their, their product. I'm going to go charge one or two, right? you know? And I, I entered the wedding industry with the wrong mentality because everything was so secretive. Right. Um, and so I think if we break down those barriers, open up conversation and really embrace that community over competition spirit, everything would be so much better. Um, we would see the industry work much more smoothly with one another. We will stop hopefully one day, not saying it's going to be tomorrow, but stop getting those inquiries of like, well, I only want to pay $500. Right. I only want to pay $250. Giving us the, the confidence and the education that we need to then go pour that education into our prospective clients. Like realistically, sweetie, like this is not what this costs. Like it's impossible for us to do anything with $250. And that, always blows my, and that always blows my mind. People come to your, they come to your Instagram and they see all these beautiful photos and then our, our, our events, just wherever you are. And you might've wrote, I was just at the top of the Met. Here's this over the top wedding. Thank you, Stevie and Mark for having us out here. And then you get a DM. Hi, I like to inquire about your photography. My budget's 500. And you're like, wait, what about that? What about what I just showed? And so then you're, then you're like, oh my gosh, the reality is, is I always say we are better and we are, we can learn. We're not the same nine squares that everybody else is. And we don't know that full story as business mm -hmm. people. We have to throw out that creative thing. I mean, come on, Shamira, if you only put out your elegant barn weddings, then that's all that's going to call you. The, exactly. I mean, which is fairness, which is, and some people just want to do barn weddings. I'm not knocking anybody that wants to do anything, but by the same token, if I went to your Instagram and saw your barn wedding and I went to Susie Smith's Instagram and saw her barn weddings and you had $5 signs and she had $2, I should be able to see the difference. So exactly my choice with my money 
to invest. But I feel that we in the industry have got to educate the couples when they come in. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. kind of brings me to the millennials and the Z generation. Are you finding, you've got to be booking Z generation people now being that you're so boutique, but the millennials were all about me, 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 me. And the Z generation is what experience do you have and what experience can you bring? Because we want the experience. Are you finding that we're finally mm -hmm. starting to get slowly into a shift of attitude? Most definitely. Most definitely. And it's, it's a refreshing shift, might I add. I, I've loved having the, the couple that wants to know the why um, behind things and, you know, why are we doing it this way and why can't we do it that way? And I have no problem answering those questions right. um, because I've gained the knowledge. Um, to be able to educate them. I, I love the, um, the millennial generation. I'm, a, I'm, I'm categorized as a millennial. I don't feel like I'm a millennial <laughs> because I'm not like, you know, the all about me. I'm the older um, branch right. of the millennials. And so um, getting able or being able to experience marrying my um, generation as um, early uh, 80s, mid 80s kiddos, like I, I really love working with them. And I think that that's probably um, a good segue too. It's, you know, do you find that, you know, I think this generation uh, goes for the generation that, hey, you know, you're a younger person, you probably understand it's the same thing I'm going for. Whereas somebody like me who's been around and I'm older and I've been around for 37 years because I'm not 37 years old. Um, I have people that come to me because they're paying for my experience. I mean, I mean, I joke all the time that the photography on the wedding day is free. You're paying me for my experience and everything up before that, you know, today, exactly. I'm free, but you're paying for the experience. So as we, as we segue and you segue your business and you segue your, your workshops, you're going to always have to be evolving to what the current need is for education. And I think the need for education now is, Show me how to do something, but let me be free to do it myself. But at least mm -hmm. with me your experiences, because as you said, for a long time, this industry had walls up saying, I'm not telling you how to do it. You need to figure out how to do it yourself. And I think we have moved past that a little bit where we can all, as I say, again, if we know each other's stories and we know where we come from and we know why we're doing it, we can all help each other, you know, get better. So, you know, as, as you're changing your, process a little bit for millennials to the z generation um where do where do you see the shift the next shift coming or where do you see the next trends in either houston weddings or just in the industry in general where do you see some shift changing? i see people moving into destination weddings like everything is going to be a destination everything is going to be like small intimate people are realizing like you don't have to have a million friends anymore. Like if I have, if I have a handful, um, I'm good. And so I think we're going to start seeing that smaller um, guest count number, but still having a bigger budget. Right. So we're still going to get, you know, that 50,000 plus budget, but then they're only going to have like 25, 30 people. And so that per person, that per person dollar amount is going to allow you to do so much more. And I really can't wait to see how that unfolds in the years to come. And I think a lot of that has to do with social media because now everybody's just having 5,000 friends on Facebook or 4,000 followers on Instagram. And you really don't know these people. So when it, I think the lesson it taught us was, I might have a lot of these people around me, but who do I want to have dinner with? Who do I want to break bread mm -hmm. with? And when you have mm -hmm. those 25 and 50 people, not only from a design element, but you can offer your wedding guests an amazing wedding weekend experience. I mean, people like exactly. set up a getting, come and get to know you, a welcome party. You can set up an amazing fab a wedding day, but then the brunch the next day. So it really lets you guys show off and share your talents. And it allows other vendors like myself, you know, I can be photographing three days now instead of just the one or having to hustle to get two other weddings if I want a three wedding weekend. Now I can have just one week mm -hmm. and really devote my time and get to know the couples and so that I am that friend with the camera when you come. So, I mean, I'm like you. I, I think mm -hmm. that is definitely um, where it's going. I'm in a destination market now. So, 
you know, every, almost every wedding we do, like I have my Canadian, I'm meeting a Canadian couple this evening for their engagement session. Um, and they travel down here to, you know, coastal Georgia for their wedding. You know, they're having it on a private island. Um, so it's everybody is coming and doing. And again, that's a 30 person wedding, which is exactly what we really love and what we like to do. So, you know, a lot right now with some advice, um, we're going to have your workshop and I know you'll share a little bit there, but what is some advice that you could give some creatives that are wanting to break into the wedding industry and not be that professional that doesn't want to share? So what advice would you give some young entrepreneurs that want to break into this industry? Get as much education as you can before you break out on your own. It's okay to work with someone or find that mentor that's going to feed into you and who really wants to see you succeed. So education, 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 never stop learning because everything is always changing. And don't ever think you're too good for education because no one is. <laughs> like, well, and we do it every day I, on a wedding. Every weekend I walk away going, yeah, but how many people have in their car? If we were to poll all the wedding industry people right now, how many people have the Betty Claus, the Susie Claus, the Tommy Claus in their contracts because they learned something on that wedding? <laughs> Might've been good. Might've been bad. Exactly. But you know have the clause in your contract because something happened that you thought, I would never ever see that in my life. But now I just saw it. Now it's a clause in my contract. Exactly. <laughs> and I think that's true. I mean, and so do you, do you ever take interns along with you or do you let people come and shadow you? What, what, I mean, there's, there's that kind of, that's your escape with your Elevate workshops. Well, both. I do. I do have interns. I reach out to my local colleges and see, you know, if anyone's in the hospitality industry that wants to come and tag along and really see things in motion. And then I have some newbie planners and designers that have just started out and I let them shadow me in some of like the style shoots that I uh, do just like my personal portfolio stuff that I do as well as weddings that um, like I feel that they're going to learn a lot from so if I have like a 300 person wedding like sometimes in our business we don't see that until um, we've progressed within the business and I like to throw them in there and see, are they going to sink or swim, you know, and like, okay, so, so after this, you know, what were your takeaways? What things can you um, see you doing in your business and, and how would you have handled this situation? Would you have handled it like I did, or would you have done something different? Um, and, you know, so that, that's really, really what I love to do. Um, so I'm an open book. Like I play nice in the sandbox. Um, so you went, if you're winning, I'm winning. We're all winning. So just come along, send me a DM, come hang out with me. Well, and then attend the workshop. And again, guys, you know, this is going to be a really, really action packed. Um, I was looking over, you know, we'll share a little bit here, you know, just in day one, you know, you're open the registration up at two o'clock and then you have a full day of opening ceremonies and then you have VIP with dinners and you know, you're going to be able to talk to the mentors and designers that are there. And you know, again, all this information can be found on the website and Tina will put that link there. But I mean, you've really thought through how to give mm -hmm. the attendees the best bang for their buck. I mean, you know, we had talked earlier off record a little bit about, just to be able to have breakfast every single morning, a relaxed breakfast for an hour with the mentors. Um, if you want to pick my brain over, you know, uh, orange juice or a mimosa, um, and you're only paying this fee to come, it is going to cost you more to do that with almost any of us uh, for a five minute phone call. Um, so, <laughs> right. so you're right, very right. candid about that. And, you know, and we pride ourselves in wanting to share, but I mean, you know, we've got, You've got um, classes on creating websites that convert. You know, we have, you know, you have somebody from the Sabo that's going to be talking. Um, and you have VIP lunches. I mean, and you're going to go out on the town at Houston. You're going to going to let people go out and, you know, shop around a little bit. So, you know, you've got, you know, these days are packed and filled. You know, you've got day one and day two. I mean, it, it's just, it's a lot of things that you're going to learn during it. But you also, guys, the attendees, you, you guys got to register. I mean, you're going to have freedom to breathe. I mean, it's, it's a very tight itinerary, right. but you don't have to do some of the things if you don't want to. There's a farewell gala. You know, you're going to be fed. Mm -hmm. But it's all those things that happen 
you know, in your small groups and, and what you walk away with with some friendships. And again, these are, you know, you might be coming to talk to a mentor or talk to a speaker and uh, you don't realize what all you're teaching us at the same time. So, you know, I really, right. want, I really want people to go. I know you're going to be out at MBA and that's coming. Yeah. Up, so I want to encourage all our listeners um, to go find you. Um, are you going to have it underneath the Elevate Design Workshop banner? Is that how people can find you or is it just going to be up under Elevate? It's, it's in Elevate. It's in the, when they open the uh, vendor exhibit hall, that's where we will have our booth set up. So um, come out there and talk to me. And might I add the swag for this workshop? Oh my goodness. Like all of the silk ribbons, all of the small details, like on day one, I'm showing you how to make those pretty like plaster um styling boards like guys we're going to have so much fun we're going to expand your um wedding day tails uh shots so we're really going to show you how to make those little things beautiful as well as you know just your overall knowledge and things of that nature and again i'll say. add i'll add that if you had to go out and buy all these things for yourself and yes there's plenty of kits there's plenty of photographers that are selling all these things and i'm not knocking anybody selling anything but you have to actually be able to use these things so here's your chance you know shamira just told you she's going to teach you how to do all this so here's your chance how to learn how to do it and if you learn how to do it the number one thing that I hear from photographers when I talk about it is, my gosh, Bobby, I'm never going to be able to do the detail shots. I have an hour built in. Well, if you work with the timeline and you work and you're honest with your planner and you say, I need two and a half hours of details, the couples can still be getting ready, guys. They can still be putting makeup on. You just have to value yourself and charge for the extra two hours that you want to be there so that you can go do these details if that is something that's part of your brand. So here she's letting you know that you're going to be given these tools to do this. And what other opportunity are you going to have where you have the time to sit down with other people that can also help and do shortcuts? The more you learn at this workshop, you're going to be able to implement it at your upcoming wedding and keep expanding on it and improving on it. And, and I, I, I think without saying too much, there um, might be some ring boxes that everybody loves that might be able to photograph with some ring boxes. Is, is that something that's true? <laughs> That is something that's true. We have an amazing sponsor um, out of California, Sunny Days Ring Boxes. Um, they're beautiful velvet ring boxes. They are all different types of shapes and colors. And just to get those Pinterest worthy pictures, oh my gosh. There you go. Like, oh my gosh. Well, that's a segue into the apps I want to talk about. So you just mentioned we know Instagram. I need to know your take on Pinterest. Is it, oh my gosh, you better be doing it? Or if you're going to do it, do it well. And if you can't do it, don't do it at all. Give us your five minute take on Pinterest. Okay, so Pinterest is what I believe is the ultimate Google of the creative world. There you um, go. So if you're not doing it, I really highly suggest that you learn to do it. You don't have to be like super tuned into it right now um, because there's all the things when it comes to Pinterest. So start playing with it, get yourself out there, um, get some images, really hone in on some keywords and things like that. And if you don't know anything about keywords, if you don't know anything about SEO, you will definitely want to get your butt to elevate um, because we're going to teach you that. Um, so Pinterest, get on it because it's going to be it is the next Google. Um, so don't think of it as something like Instagram or Facebook because it's definitely not that platform. Think of it as an elevated Google search. That is the, that's probably the best quote I have ever heard. The ultimate Google in the creative world. I mean, I've never, I'm, I'm, trust me, we're going to run that on your little, on the Be Fabul podcast. We're going to run that on the, on the Instagram that that's your quote. I mean, because I'm thinking, oh man, it's so passe. People aren't really doing it now because Instagram and here is a boutique designer who is a creator of a, of a workshop. And now you're saying that it is to be all end all and that we should all be doing it. So I think that holds a lot of merit into it. So do you think that it marries well with Instagram? Should you be doing one or the other or you really should be doing both? You really should be doing both because Instagram is your 
marketing tool. It's your short little snippet. Um, it's kind of like the sister to Twitter. Um, so it's your short snippets with a beautiful picture. But then you link it over to your Pinterest, which is kind of like your Facebook on steroids. You have a picture, you have longer details, and it can link you to your website. You can send them anywhere once they get to your Pinterest. So you can backdoor and send them to your website. And gosh, the converting possibility is endless. And that's amazing. So I'm, I'm thrilled that we're going to be learning that because see, that's something that, you know, this 37 year old veteran, you know, always needs to do more because, you know, you say the word blog and SEO and um, all the creatives fall asleep. But if you want to keep your doors open <laughs> right? And, and you want to keep your doors open and you want to get, and, I mean, I think everybody would love to aspire to be you and say, Hey, I have a boutique business. I do 12 weddings and they're not for $500 each. I support myself with my 12 weddings because I'm getting the price and the rate I'm getting the respect that I deserve, not only mm -hmm. for couples, but from the fellow wedding industry itself. So, I mean, I think that is, I think that's brilliant. And um, I know a little bit about um, Two Bright Lights. I, I'm, I'm good friends with uh, one of those lovely people there. Um, we're going to be talking yeah. about Two Bright Lights at the uh, workshop. And I want to make sure that listeners understand that they will be able to submit their style shoot from here. They're going to be able to submit it to some places. Um, are we going to have somebody talking about how exactly. to Exactly. It's another avenue to get your name out there with Pinterest. Um, and Two Bright Lights is amazing. And I, I always like to remind people, like, you don't have to be a photographer to have a Two Bright Lights account. Yes. I encourage you as a planner, as a designer, as a photographer to um, really submit your work um, because that back end, um, back linking and all of that stuff in getting more stuff to point to your website, the better guys. And these outlets that have been um, made for us, we really, really need to start utilizing them. And I love the open gallery feature that um, Two Bright Lights introduced this year. So um, you don't have to submit to a specific um, blog or magazine you can literally put your pictures out there and people can come peruse through your pictures and be like hey i want you um so i i love it exactly and listeners don't forget you can uh go back in the archives for episode 25 of the beef Evil podcast and i had a great conversation uh with the fabulous megan brown um talking about two bright lights during that podcast so i'm always excited when uh, she can partner and uh and really teach and do things with us and again it's one more element that you're offering to the attendees that come. You're going to set them up with amazing work tablescapes, amazing work, amazing creative. We're going to feed your brain. We're going to feed your soul. And, and you're going to be able to take some really walk away with some photos. So you, like she said earlier, guys, Shamira said, you walk away with that notebook and you don't do anything with it. If you walk away with these photos, guys, and I think planners will be taking photos. I think the floors will be taking photos. If you walk away with these photo guys, you're going to have a tangible item that reminds you of what you just did and you're going to see your investment and then you're going to want to do something with it. And let's be, let's be true here, guys. You know, we're coming into December after this workshop in January where you may not have a lot of weddings to post. This is going to give you some great filler. Don't you agree, Shamira, to, to fill in? This, this is prime filler content and prime engagement season content. We are literally a few weekends before engagement season so those beautiful ads that we need to all start uh, curating and working on this is your content guys exactly and so you know again I want you guys to go to the elevated workshop I want you to go and follow them on Instagram I want you know we'll have all the links to that but you know I want you to be able to get in and get in on this guy she's she's taking a very few attendees this is not going to be 500 people this is not going to be a hundred I dare say mm -hmm. we're going to be less than 50 folks I mean, we're be less than that so I'm very honored to be speaking and being participated so I'm going to be there the, all the days um, I'm going to fly in there on that you know get there early on Sunday and I'm going to be there for the duration um, I love meeting and chatting. Um, I hope to do some podcast interviews with a couple of the attendees there, and we'll just have a little bit of Elevate uh, Babel content um, that we'll talk about on the podcast. So I really, really want you guys to go out, see Shamir and NBA, get on all the links that Tina's going to put in here and get signed up. And is there any, is there any, mm -hmm. is there any specials 
or anything going on that you want to add to let to entice people to go click that button and sign up any specials hmm if i were you i may use be yourself and the coupon code um discount box and see what you unveil oh my gosh and are we having some scholarships is that are they still eligible to enter for a scholarship or are they still entering you, there you go you know what we do have scholarships we are giving away six scholarships guys six, six. <laughs> full scholarships and three partial scholarships one for each outlet um so go on over to our instagram and see how to enter um to win that and it's super simple share a picture tag your besties who you want to come rock out with you at this workshop and tell us why you want to be there and what it can do for your business um, as simple as that get your um, entries in by Monday of next week. And um, the very next day, you'll know who the winners are. And that so. gives you guys enough time to come on and join us. And if you're going to go see her at NBA, but again, get over to Instagram at Elevate Design Workshop. Fill, the information is all there. I also been sharing things on my Instagram, guys. But I want to leave it as this. Let's, let's remind our listeners we have all the wonderful workshop information and we know what you're doing, but the theme for this is very moving and important to me um, because I do believe we need to believe ourselves that we believe that we're good, that we value who we are and that by being our authentic selves, we are sharing our purpose. Um, our purpose is to give away what we love to do. That is our purpose on life and by being of service to our couples. So the theme for this workshop is very, very near and dear to my heart. So leave our listeners with three words that you hope others think and feel about you. I hope y'all feel inspired. I hope y'all are encouraged. I, I really want to see everyone succeed. Friendship, love, which kind of to me means the same thing. So um, I love you all guys. And I, I, I really want to see everyone um, succeed in life. And, and I in think their that is perfect. And I think that, you know, if anything... You know, the podcast today, we just wanted to talk a little bit about the workshop. You know, we're going to have you back. I'm going to talk to you a little bit more down at the workshop. We're in Houston. We're going to do some behind the scenes. So everybody, when I get down there, my Instagram for those three days, four days are going to be really full of the behind the scenes and what you're missing. So I really want to see you guys in the Instagram stories. And I know that you're inspiring people because of what you're doing with your workshop. I know that you're inspiring people with how you treat your boutique couples. And I know that you're encouraging everybody to be themselves and friendship and love goes hand in hand. And in this industry, we all need to be friends and we need to love on each other. So we succeed. So listeners, make sure you go to the show notes. You're going to find everything about for elevate the design workshop there. You're going to find out the links to Shamira's own personal businesses. So that if you're in the area and you need a Fabo a wedding designer, this is the woman to go to. So thank you for joining us today. Everybody have a fab -a weekend. Get to Elevated Design Workshops, guys. Sign up. This is a wonderful opportunity to help with the scholarships. Follow along on Instagram with me, and I can't wait to see you all in Houston. And thank you for the opportunity of chatting with you today, and I will see you real soon, Shamira. Yes, thank you so much for having me. I can't wait to see you. Thanks for joining us. We hope these conversations will take you into your wedding weekend with a little more confidence proud of what you do and how you serve your clients. Maybe you even picked up a business tip or two. Till next time, be fabulous.